Hey guys, it's Mike Einstein and this is the Asus VivoBook 15, the newest addition to the VivoBook series. So last week I reviewed the Asus VivoBook S15 on the channel which came out right before the VivoBook 15 and like I said in that review, there are a couple of things these two laptops have in common from the screen to the nano edge display to the design. But as we head along this video, I'm gonna compare these two laptops together so you can find out exactly which one of these would be a better choice for you. So before I ordered the VivoBook S15, I saw that Asus had the VivoBook 15 on pre-order and I really wanted to get that because it was gonna be new and it was gonna be fresh. But for some reason, a couple of days later, that link was gone and the device was no longer available on Amazon. So it was pretty bummer. But of course, after I bought the slightly older S15, it came right back on Amazon and I ended up getting an outdated machine. Great. Okay, let's talk about the VivoBook 15 now. So for you, my nerdy friends, use the specs. It's using an AMD's Ryzen 5 processor with a Radeon Vega 8 graphics card, 16 gigabytes of RAM, a one terabyte hard drive, or an optional 256 gigabytes SSD. But I would recommend you get this SSD version because it's just faster storage and a much better performance. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the design because that's literally the first thing anyone notices about any piece of tech. So the VivoBook 15 is a really beautiful laptop. It comes in a couple of colors. There's a silver, there's a blue, an orange, a gray, just like the S series and the S15. And that's just one thing I love about Asus laptops. The color selection is just amazing. It's also implementing the new Ergolift hinge, which elevates the keyboard by about five millimeters to help with typing for long periods of time. So I really love that. This is also on the S15 and it looks really nice and really cool. And it has helped with my typing experience by far. I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to go back to a flat keyboard again. So it is really nice to have it here on the VivoBook 15 as well. The keyboard itself is backlit, just like the S15. I'd say I like the S15's keyboard a bit better as it has a bit more travel and it feels better to type on. It's not mushy or squishy like on the 15, but hey, if it's a better keyboard than the MacBook, then it's good. Unfortunately, they stuck to the same arrow key positioning that I kind of hate. I found that with gaming, my fingers just can't get around them. So it is kind of annoying to have to fiddle with that. And another thing on the VivoBook 15, there's no indicators to tell if the touchpad is on or off like there is on the VivoBook S15, but this isn't really an issue because I accidentally pushed this button on my S15 once and of course it turned off my trackpad. I got kind of worried because the mouse wasn't working. I got really scared I broke it, but then I found the button to turn it back on and I was like, whew, man. Like I literally just bought this. How could you break? That button shouldn't even be there, man. So not having it on the VivoBook 15 isn't really an issue. I actually even love it. Now the build quality is not very impressive. It's an all plastic chassis on the top and the bottom. It does have a nice polished finish for an extra protection, but it is still plastic and it's not gonna hold up against accidental drops. That is one thing the Asus VivoBook S15 does better. It's not all metal here, but it does have a fully metal top with almost no flex at all. And that promises for, of course, a much tougher, much more compact computer. The screen on the VivoBook 15 is good, but not great. If you watch my review of the S15, by the way, I'm gonna keep plugging it until you go watch it. One of the things I loved about it was the screen. It had a really nice, beautiful full HD display with beautiful colors, and it is awesome for everyday use. But the VivoBook 15 has the same exact 1080p display, but for some reason it kind of looks less appealing. It doesn't get very bright for outdoor viewing, and the colors aren't so great either. It still looks good for the most part, you can get a lot of stuff done with it, possibly enjoy a few movies on it, but if you do a lot of video editing or Photoshop work, and you need to have a computer with a decent color accuracy, then you might wanna go with the S15 instead. Speaking of which, the speakers on this device are pretty average as well. It's usable at low volumes, but you really don't wanna use it at higher volumes because it gets kind of uncomfortable. The performance on this laptop is again, pretty average. I expected a lot more from it when I saw the specs. I mean, an AMD Ryzen 5, a dedicated graphics card. It should be good, right? But turns out, I had a much better experience with the S15 from video editing to light gaming to media consumption. I think it should be a better choice for gaming since it does have its own dedicated graphics card, but the difference really isn't all that much because the S15 is pretty on top of its game right now. It's a really snappy computer, so it kind of wins over the VivoBook 15 on this one. For battery life, I was getting at least two hours of screen on time compared to a four hour screen on time I was getting with the VivoBook S15. Again, a pretty average score. It is gonna get you through a bit of work before you need to charge it, but I prefer the longer battery life on the VivoBook 15 
any day. So the final verdict is that the VivaBook 15 is a pretty average computer. It doesn't really excel at anywhere and it doesn't really impress. I think Asus didn't really try as much as possible with this one like they did with the S15. I really love the S15 and I thought the VivoBook 15 was going to be like much better than it, but it actually ended up being pretty average and really kind of hard to recommend. So if you're like a college student and you just want a laptop to browse the internet, prepare some files on Microsoft Word or something, then you cannot go wrong with the VivoBook 15. But if you need a lot more work done, you need more video editing work, you do a lot of Photoshop work, you do a lot of graphics work, a lot of gaming. I would look somewhere else. So I hope this video helped in some way. Be sure to smash that like button so I can keep making more videos like this. I'll have links below in the description for you guys to go check stuff out if you want to pick any of these laptops up. <laughs> and if you haven't figured out which of these laptops you're going to get, do not worry. There will be a lot more reviews coming up in the future on this channel. So don't forget to turn on post notifications so you'll be the first to see those. All right. Thanks for watching and I'm going to catch you guys in the next video.